Uh, we're here with Vince, and we're just going to break down this UFC 149 main card. How's it going, man? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good. So uh, I think there's been nine fighters in total that have been pulled off this card and replaced. Um, just talk about injuries in the sport right now. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, as a fighter, the worst thing you want is to get injured before a fight, man. You know, like, that kind of stuff sucks. It's It's kind of like... It's kind of like you're getting ready for, you know, the biggest day of your life, and then all of a sudden something happens where you get shut down and you can't go, you know? Like, it, all I can say is just it's a really bad feeling. I mean, I haven't gone through it yet from injuries, been injured before a fight and had to pull out of a fight yet. Um, they've all been, like, pretty minor, so I've been lucky that's thus far. Um, but, but, I mean, it's definitely, like, the worst thing you want to happen for a fight especially, you know, just to get injured and not be able to fight. Yeah, so let's just get started here with uh, the main card. we got Chris Clements versus Matt Riddle, and we posted a video yesterday, um, Chris Clements did with a local TV station here in London, Ontario, Canada, um, and he basically said he loved to, I don't want to misquote him, but he was basically saying that uh, because he's older, he can't pull out of this card, he can't, you know, there's a lot of injuries, but he just can't afford to pull out of this card, so uh, would that concern you in this fight? Um, you know, him, him saying something like that is, is kind of like basically saying he'll go in there hurt or not, you know, which, which sometimes, you know, as a, as a fighter, you go into every fight, a lot of times you're not a hundred percent, you know, you have some kind of little minor injury. Um, but him saying that is basically saying, you know, regardless of the minor injury he has, he's going to go out there and he's going to put a good show and, you know, he wants to beat Matt Riddle, you know, I've, I've seen a couple, uh, little things I'm trying to find it right now, but I saw something about him, you know, basically calling out Riddle saying he wants to fight Riddle, you know, he wants this fight. So, you know, I definitely I definitely know that that the enthusiasm on his part's there and, and he's basically basically willing to do what it takes to get this fight and to beat Matt Riddle, you know. Um Matt Riddle is a tough dude though. You know, there's 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 no quit in that guy, you know, no matter how hard you hit him, he's still gonna come forward, he's gonna be swinging, he's gonna have a smile on his face. You know, that's Matt Riddle, so it's definitely gonna be an exciting fight. Yeah, so who'd you like in this one? Um, it was a little hard, but I might have to give it to Riddle. You know, I think Riddle's going to grind him out and, you know, just push forward the whole time and basically going to come at him with something that he's not going to know how to stop, you know, and and that's what Matt Riddle does best. You know, he, he may not look like the most technical guy, but when he goes out there, he fights, and he fights the full time. You know, he doesn't back up. He's And like I said, he's always smiling, which, you know, puts a smile on my face seeing another guy just – go in there and get bashed and beat up and still smiling and swinging ahead, you know, like, it's the kind of fighters I like to watch. It's always exciting with Matt Riddle. So, uh, I'm going to have to give it to him, you know, I think he can grind it out of him. we got James Head, he's going to be taking on Brian Ebersol. Just talk about this matchup. Oh, man, Ebersol, uh, his last fight, Ebersol, I mean, I don't, I honestly don't know how that guy kept on going, you know, he was in and out of submissions, you know, just getting hit. And Ebersol was, he was, man, he just didn't want to go away, you know. He's a super, super tough dude, you know. The, the little air we had on his chest was a little weird. His hair was a little weird, but, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know much about the other guy, you know. Um, I'll honestly admit, for me being a fighter, you know, I'm, I'm kind of naive and stupid as far as the game. You know, I don't really pay attention to a lot of guys. I don't let a lot of the hype from the guys get to me. Um, I know he's, you know, going to be a tough dude, but, you know, I, I can't say no to Ebersol, man. Like, that guy, I have... I, have him all the way, regardless of who he fights, just because of what a machine that guy is. He doesn't stop. Um, you know, he'll be in the worst situations and just keep on trucking through. You know, like it doesn't slow him down. His his facial expression doesn't change. He just fights, and you know, he's in it to win it. And you know, I'm gonna give that one to Eversol just because he's a tough dude. And and uh, like I said, I don't know much about the other guy. I know he is a pretty tough dude too, but I gotta go Eversol. Hey okay, man, uh, next up we got Czech Congo and Sean Jordan. And uh, Sean Jordan's looked pretty impressive, um, former NCAA football player turned mixed martial artist. Um, just talk about this matchup. Yeah, I looked up a lot on Sean Jordan, and, and uh, he actually is a, I mean, he's a small, compact dude, but he is, is strong, as strong as hell, you know, like super tough dude, physically strong. Um, Czech Congo was a big beast, you know, definitely not someone you want to see in a dark alley at night when he's pissed off. Right. But, uh, but you know, I, I have this... This can go either way, you know. If it stays standing, I'm definitely going to give the check Congo. I mean, if he if he finds his range on Jordan and just starts throwing his combinations, getting more comfortable, 
Jordan's going to have a really hard time trying to do anything with him, you know. However, if Jordan gets him down or, you know, utilizes wrestling, kind of basically, you know, wears Congo down and grinds him out, I think Jordan can, can get the win, you know. But then again, Congo's been working on his ground game a lot lately. You can tell in his last few fights that he's actually been, uh, you know, working on him actually taking people down, which is something you don't see from Chad Congo, you know, right? He's just out there to out there to knock the guy out. So um, I'm a little bit out of a standstill, but, you know, in this one I'm, I'm taking Congo, you know. He, he definitely has a stamp advantage. He's been working on his ground. Um, Jordan is a big dude with scary power, but I think his only chance will be to, you know, basically get Congo down, grind him out, and, you know, basically take Congo out of his uh, comfort zone, which is stand up and, you know, finding his range. So, uh, definitely, yeah, I'm going to take Congo on this one. Hey, man. Um, co main event time. We got Hector Lombard coming over from Bellator, their heavyweight champion. He's stepping in there with uh, Tim Bosch. Um, pretty good matchup. Honestly, I have no clue who to pick in this fight, man. Uh, I'm a big Bosch fan, you know. Like I'm all about Tim Bosch. He's, right. he's a tough dude. He, he's out there. He's fighting. He, he he's super super. Uh, you know, just just strong. He's big. He's long, and he knows how to use it. You know, he. Land, I've seen him land a lot of knees. Like like when he fought a. Uh, um, I can't think of his name right now. Matt Hamill, right? And he landed that knee and just split his lip. Like that was nasty style, man. Like disgusting. I mean, you see some nasty cuts in May, but in the lip like that from a knee, I mean, that was pretty crazy, you know. But, you know, Lombard, Lombard's an explosive killer. He's always looking for the finish, you know. To, to honestly have me pick a fight for this is more dilemma. It's like me having two kids and the kid's coming up to me and saying, which one's your favorite, Dad? Which one's your favorite? And then you're like, uh, you know, like, I like both of you, you know. Can I pick both? Um, I don't know, man. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to have to, I'm going to have to stick with Bosch on this one, you know. Uh, I really think Hector Lombard has, you know, a really good chance of honestly just destroying Tim Bosch just because of his explosiveness and how he just goes after it. But Tim Bosch is, is definitely a gamer, and, and I think he could uh, basically slow Lombard down a little bit. I think he land a couple shots on him, you know, and kind of slow Lombard down and stop him from wanting to basically just kind of run at him and just and just impose his will on him. So uh, I'm going to go Bosch. I'm going to go Bosch. Hey, good stuff, man. And we have Bosch on the show uh, tomorrow. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, for sure. So, Tell my well, what's up? I want a picture. <laughs> nice, man, nice. So the way I kind of see this fight going is Hector's going to finish it in the first round or Bosch is going to, you know, hang in there and pull it out late just like Okami. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, um, Lombard's no joke, man. I mean, look at his record. That guy's a monster. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's just been destroying people, and you watch videos on this guy, and he's just going after it, you know. He'll get hit, come right in, you know. He'll take a shot to throw three shots, you know. He's, he's that kind of dude that will be like, all right, you're going to land a shot? Well, I'm going to land mine right after, and we'll see who's tougher, you know. Like, he's that kind of dude. So, you know, he definitely, I think, he, like I said, he has a big chance of winning. If he does finish it, I do see him finishing in the first round. But if not, you know, he's going to have a really hard time with Tim Bosch. Okay, let's do the uh, main event here, man. We got Araya Faber versus Renan Burrow. Who'd you got? Um, <laughs> this one, it, it's a, it's another back and forth fight. You know, Burrow has explosive stand up. He's an excellent ground fighter as well. Faber also explosive stand up. You know, top notch wrestling. You know, and ground game as well. You know, styles make fights. This one, I'm I'm gonna have to give it to Faber. I could see the fight going, you know, the distance, and if it does end up in that kind of battle, you know, Faber's, Faber's cardio is almost second to none, you know. That guy, he fights the whole time, whether it's five rounds or ten rounds, Faber's out there to fight, you know, and he's no slouch, he's all around dangerous, you know. But then again, so is, so is uh, Burrell, you know. Um, he has a crazy way of fighting, you know, he, he, he'll go out there and he'll throw everything at you, even in the kitchen sink, you know, if he has it. Um, so I don't, I don't expect this to be a boring fight or one-sided fight, but yeah, I, if this goes a distance, I honestly see Faber taking this. And you know, it, as much as it, it's like kind of hard for me to say that because Faber was my enemy for three months of this year, you know. But you know, I'm gonna have to go with Faber. He's you know top-notch fighter. He's there to win it. And you know, I definitely want. I know that he wants to get that belt back. And you know, he he has all the motivation right now. You know, not that Brow doesn't. I mean, the guy's on a, what, a 29 fight win streak. So, I mean, he's definitely someone, you know, that you have to keep your eye on regardless of uh, who he's fighting. Um, but I'm going to have to go with Faber. I think Faber's going to get the advantage on this one. What do you think? 
I'm not sure. I'm, this one's tough. This is tough. But I'm just looking here at the uh, gambling odds. And uh, a lot of the lines they don't have out for the fights um, at UFC 149, but they got the line out for this one. And uh, Faber is the um, underdog, plus oh, 150. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, Burrell's a big favorite, minus 180. Got to lay down 180 to win 100 bucks. Hey, that's okay, man. I think, you know, Faber doesn't mind being the underdog in any kind of fight, you know. Honestly, I think... I think that probably pushes him a little more and makes him strive a little more because me too, being an underdog, I like it. It's kind of like, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm supposed to go out there and lose, so what do I really have to lose, you know? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to throw it all and lay it all on the line. You know, I know Faber doesn't really see it that way because, you know, in his eyes, he's not the underdog. and a lot of people, he's not the underdog. You know, and obviously, uh, Hennon Burrell uh, feels the same way, you know? But uh, it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be exciting, you know? And I just... I just can't wait for it, honestly. I'm just expecting just an explosive war, of, you know, of it, of it kind of seeming like two little squirrels just chasing a nut and just going at it, you know? Right. They're so small. And, you know, I know people say that, you know, Hennon Brow is kind of like a mini, mini Aldo. You know, I've heard people say that before, and they're going to say, you know, he's going to give Faber a lot of trouble because look what happened when he fought Aldo. But, you know, he, the fact of the matter is he might fight like Aldo, but he's not Aldo. And, you know, regardless if he is Aldo or not, Faber's going to go out there and Faber's going to fight, you know? And, and that's that's what the, one of the great qualities about Faber is is he's out there to fight and he puts he puts his training above anything else and you know when he's going out there you're gonna know that Faber's out there to fight and he's out there to finish the guy if he can. Okay, man, and I guess for the UFC they kind of want Faber to win this fight to set up that trilogy, eh? Yeah, for Cruz and uh, him. Um, yeah, you know what? When when Cruz got hurt, that was kind of like a that was a big bummer, man. Like I don't know, everyone wanted to see, you know. I get I get tweets from people saying, "Oh, I can't wait for Faber whoop his ass." That I get tweets, "Oh, I can't wait for Cheek Cruz to whoop his ass." You know, so it goes both ways. And you know, I, I'm a, I want to see the trilogy too. I want to see who comes out on top of this of this uh, trilogy, of this fight, this three, the third fight between those two. And he, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, Dominic is just you know healing up, coming back. And you know, I, I have no doubt that Dominic's going to come back just as strong as he was before, if not stronger for the fight. You know, I know Faber's ready for it. Faber's basically going to take out, you know, Brow to get uh, Cruz because I know he wants that bad. Not just for the belt, but, you know, I know uh, Faber and Cruz don't have too much good blood between each other. So, you know, that that's going to make the fight a little more interesting. Hey, cool, man. Well, uh, thanks for doing this. You go with Raya Faber, underdog. You go with Tim Bosch, underdog. Um, I'll assume that Congo's going to be a favorite and Ebersol will be a favorite, but... Uh, I think Matt Riddle's going to be an underdog headed into this fight with Chris Clements because he's coming in on short notice here. Yeah. So, uh, good picks, man. Not going with the favorites, and uh, <laughs> makes it interesting, buddy. It's all about the underdogs, man. I like the bad guys winning, too, sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks for doing this. No problem. Thank you for having me. Okay, see ya. All right, bye.